Here, my mother sometimes saying, you know, when she prayed, you know, like I said, my heavenly father, but she always, a lot of times she said, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, and I'm saying, hey, hey, hey. You know, but, you know, when you, when you, when these was, I was thinking about, these are just more than prophets, see, because these people, see, during the Old Testament, God talked to them. And, you know, in like verse 1, he said, I never leave you. But, see, God talked to them, and he told them things to do. So, verse 14. Now, verse 14, to me, it seemed more than an Old Testament scripture. Verse 14, if you read it, it seemed like, hey, he said, in thy seed, shall be the dust of the earth. Now, the dust of the earth, come on. I mean, everywhere you go, there's dirt. <laughs> so he's talking about the whole world. That seed. And then he says, he says, and thou shalt spread abroad to the east, to the west, to the east, and to, and to the north and the south. And thee, and that seed, shall be all the families of the earth. Mm -hmm. So now, what, he, what he's talking about here, he's not talking about Abraham, see? But he told Abraham, what did he tell Abraham? Like the stars in the sky. And Abraham makes him, how many, he said, extra stars <laughs> can you can be counted? Now, here, he telling Jacob that his seeds it's like the dust up there. So it's almost like you got to have a special seed. You know, the seed got to be more than a man's seed. See? Amen. So you got to have God's seed in him. Amen. So he's telling him that in the Old Testament, that I'm telling you that Jacob, he got my seed in him. He said, because if he didn't, I wouldn't say so. It's written. You tell me what you know today that saying that my seed. But see, we know, we understand we, that his seed is Jesus Christ. Amen. But see, sometimes God, he shows us a forerunner. He shows us sometimes that, see, think about, let's go back to verse 12. And he said, and he had a dream. But now before this dream, he had two rocks that he put on and he laid his head before he got that dream. So I, and I, I remember somewhere in the New Testament where he asked Peter, who do you say I am? Yeah. Oh man, come on now. Come on, come on now. I'm not gonna be, he said, who do you say I am? Yeah. Yeah. And when Peter gave him that answer, he said, on this rock, you with me? Yes, yes, he yes, said, yes. on this rock, I'll be a my church. Yes, yes. So you know what? I'm thinking now, I'm saying now, where, see, see, I was taught that whatever you find in the Old Testament, you'll find it in the New Testament. You know, so I looked around and, and, and and then I, I I went to John. I went to John, see. But I was I heard so many sermons on John. So many sermons that this woman at the well, I heard a preacher say she came there hitting on Jesus. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm saying I hear so much about this woman. But now, see, Jesus had some disciples with him that was so far behind until if you listen to them, you get a message. So, you know, now this message that I got was part of that dream way back. Part of those rocks that he stands. See, see those rocks was special rocks. See, now, Jesus said in one of his verses, he said, in John, he said, he told the disciples, 
He said, I must go through Samaria. And see, you know, I sit and I wonder, I'm saying, Samaria? So then the Holy Spirit said, go to John. Say, read John. And see, can you find out where is that meat? See? So he said, I got to go to Samaria because he told Jacob, I would never leave you or forsake you. He said, I will be there for you. So when he went to John, and John, this woman came up. And so when this woman walked up, she started talking to Christ. And guess what? Christ offered her living water. But first thing he did, he said, give me some water. She said, you a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. He said, she said, I don't have no right to give you some water. It's not right. But Jesus said, if you had a gave me some water, he said, I would give you some everlasting water. So Jesus said, uh, he said, she said, I want some everlasting water. But now he had already sent those disciples that really loved him. Go get me some meat. He said, the Bible said, he said, go buy me some meat. But now when I was reading in the, in the, the other versions, King James said, buy me meat. And see, but the other versions say, fool. But I like the one that said, buy me some meat. Even though Christ knows there's no meat in town. Because he, he knows it all. But, so now, I, I want to find out what that meat was. See, and so when his disciples ran back, I'm going to skip a few first, but when his disciples came back, they said, we couldn't find them. We couldn't find no meat. Jesus said, I had my meat. Jesus said, I had my meat. He said, but the meat that I have, he said, you don't know. See, now I remember that I heard a lot of people talk about meat. See, you can have meat in a, in a sermon. You can have meat. See, you can have that spiritual meat. But Jesus said, I had my meat. And they run around trying to find out where is the meat. Now, the question I got for you this morning was, is what meat did Jesus have? I know my wife knows because she wrote it down. But what meat did she have? What meat did he have? See, see, the girl, see, sometimes we can miss the whole message by not studying it and reading it. Now, at that well, with nobody there but the woman came. So whatever meat he had, he had to get it from that woman. But what did she say? What did she say that would make him think that he didn't meet? But I'm a close preacher, but what I want to tell you, I want to tell you what that means, and I want to tell you, don't miss the message looking for something but without reading the word of God. Now that meat was, I'm going to tell you what that meat was. That meat was he looked, she looked at him and said, are you smarter than my father Jacob? Now remember what God told Jacob, I would never leave you, I would never forsake you. But then God said, told his disciples, I got to go to Samaria to confirm the word I told Jacob. He said, when I sat on this well, He's with me. He said, no man gets to the Father but by me. He said, everywhere I go, I am the stairwell of heaven. So when he sat on that well, Jacob's dream was fulfilled. So I want you to know that sometimes I had a dream. I told my wife six months ago. I said, you know what? 
When I got up one time and I was going to preach about Jacob, I said, but I walked away. But even before this happened, the Spirit had told me, he said, you would be speaking on your birthday. He said, you already got the sermon. I mean, before he called me, before Don called me, you know, but then Bill, I told him, oh, that's confirming. He was to my house. I said, you know what, Bill? I believe, what did I say? I would be speaking on my birthday. And he said it. But see, sometimes it's within God's will you're going to do it. But I want you to remember that when you have a dream, God talked to you in dreams. Just like he talked to Jacob, he'll talk to you too. So I want you to leave him with this message that, that when, you see, when you see dreams in the Bible. See, when I saw that dream, some dreams before in the Old Testament, I said, man, how could it be? Just the same thing I said with this, how could it be? How can a ladder reach heaven? But boy, Jesus at that bottom of that love, he reached heaven and all the way through. So I'm going to leave that with you. And I hope that you receive something from this word. Amen. 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 I hope y'all got that word today. Amen. Amen. What I really want to do, I, I, I like doing this on Fifth Sunday where some of the people can speak and bring the word of God and a lot of time we grow from it and we be witnessed, you know, be witnessed all through the all through the world, in the streets, on your job. And it, it's good to be able to speak. It's good to be able to share, you know, fellowship together. You know, and it, it's a blessing. You know, it's a blessing. You know, he spoke on on Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. You know, he spoke on that. Vic, Spoke on the word of God. So, you know, I, I, you know, in Romans 8, 35 to 39, you know, I want you to know that you're more than a conqueror. I want you to read that. That, you know, and, and if God is for us, who can be against us? We have to realize can't nobody be against us. We got to eat off that foundation. You got to find your salvation somewhere. You know, you got to be connected to God. If you're connected to God, then you know what God wants. But if you're not connected to God, how can you know about the Holy Spirit? How can you know about the Holy Spirit? So, you know, I, I, I really, I, I really, I'm really happy um, just hearing them speak the word of God today. And I want you to just, you know, bring the new year in saying I'm more than a conqueror. You know, no death, no height, no principality, no negative, no sport can separate us from the from the love of God. Yeah. Nothing can separate, even your children, yeah. even things that are going on in your household can separate you from the love of God. Yeah. Uh, a, a brother, he's he's going to um, come up and close us out, but I, I, you know, I hope Pastor put in his mind to let us all, you know, be witness. <laughs> You know, let us all understand who God is, where we can grow together in unity in the body of Christ. Amen. Thank you.
Amen. 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 Amen.